Hi, my name is Marco Berube. I'm a product manager at Red Hat working on migration tools. And today I'm going to be talking about how to migrate your applications to OpenShift 4. So there's two different things that we've built to help you actually uh, get started on OpenShift 4. So the first one is the Control Plane Migration Assistant Tool or CPMA. CPMA helps you configure your OpenShift 4 cluster to match when when possible, all the settings that you had on your OpenShift 3 cluster. Then once you have your OpenShift 4 uh, installed and configured properly, then you can use the Cluster Application Migration Tool or CAM Tool to migrate your applications from your OpenShift 3 cluster to your new OpenShift 4 cluster. Here's what the Cluster Application Migration Tool looks like. The first thing I would do in the tool is to configure both clusters. So I would configure my OpenShift 3 cluster and then I would add the credential for my OpenShift 4 cluster. Once both, both clusters have been configured and I'm ready to uh, add a repository, which is uh, any object storage that I want to use to copy the data during the migration process. Then finally, I will create my first migration plan. So migration plan is a grouping of all the namespaces or projects that you would like to migrate during um, one migration. Uh, you can create as many plans as you want, but when you're executing a plan, all the namespace or projects inside that plan are going to get migrated at the same time. Here's a, let's have a look on how this uh, worked underneath the hood. So this tool is based on two open source projects. The first one is Velero and the second one is Restic. So Velero is uh, a popular tool in the Kubernetes community to help uh, backup and restore resources uh, from uh, a Kubernetes cluster. Um, so the way we're using this tool here is this tool is going to help us copy all the resources, uh, copy them into our object storage, and then automatically restore them on your destination side, where Restic is actually allowing you to do uh, full or incremental copies of your PVs during the migration process to accelerate the migration from one side to another. Um, so by combining both tools, then we can migrate all the resources inside one project at the same time as being efficient on the PV side to copy the data from source to your target destination. So here's what the CAM high-level architecture looks like. So first on the left side, I have my source cluster, which would typically be an OpenShift 3 cluster on which I would install Velero. Then on the right side on my, on my target cluster, I would use uh, typically an operator to install Velero as well as my OpenShift container platform migration API, which come with a UI, which I just showed like two slides before. So you can either directly use the API or the UI for, during the migration process. And then you have the object storage uh, at the top uh, that is going to be used uh, to back up the data to before it get restored on your target cluster on the right side. So when you are uh, looking at migrating PVs, the tool is going to allow you to pick up between two different ways of copying the data. The first one is a move and the second one is a copy. So if we look at the moving the PV, um, this requires that you have uh, shared storage between both clusters. So if the target cluster can see the same storage as your source cluster, like typically like, for example, like NFS storage, then in that kind of situation, it's actually possible to move the PV or to reattach the PV to your target cluster without any impact on, or without any need of copying the data, I should say. So this is, this is obviously the fastest option as we don't have to copy any data. We're just reattaching that PV from your source cluster to your destination cluster. So the second alternative when move is not possible is to do a copy of the data. So copy is based on the RESTIC technology that I was describing at the beginning. So what RESTIC does is doing either full or incremental copies of your data. So first the data is going to get back backed up on your uh, repository. And then during the final migration, then we can just do an incremental backup. So all the files that have changed since the last staging of your data, and then that data will get restored on your target cluster. 
So this uh, obviously requires a little bit more time than a move, but at the same time, we can accelerate that copy by doing full and incremental backups uh, to help you migrate the PVs as quickly as possible from source to target cluster. So this is the two options that the uh, the tool is going to allow you during the migration process. So the first one is stage. So typically the first time that you will execute a migration plan, you would typically do a stage if you're doing a copy instead of a move. What stage allow you to do is to do a full copy of the data. Then when you are clicking migrate, uh, actually what Rustic will do in the background for the copy is to only do an incremental copy of the data. So instead of having to copy all the data again, only the latest bits are gonna get copied over. And then at that point, uh, your application, uh, we will quiesce the application on the OpenShift 3 cluster and do the full migration on the OpenShift 4 side. So how to execute the migration. Um, so the first thing, as I was pointing before, uh, we recommend using the CPMA tool to look at your OpenShift 3 configuration, uh, which uh, is gonna help you configure your OpenShift 4 cluster. So by configuring your OpenShift 3 cluster and your OpenShift 4 cluster the same way, this simplifies the migration of your projects or namespaces from one cluster to another. Uh, then once your migration has been when your OpenShift 4 cluster has been fully configured, then we will also recommend using the same uh, IDM uh, authentication service for both clusters. Uh, also making sure that you have access to the same storage classes, depending if you want to do copy or move. So if, you wanna, if you're looking at moving the PVs, you should attach your NFS storage to both clusters, as well as you'll need a way to also fail over the date, the, 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 the networking aspect of it or the access of your application. So uh, which you would typically do either using uh, your corporate DNS or a load balancer to move uh, the network from going to your OpenShift 3 cluster for that specific application to now aiding your OpenShift 4 cluster every time a request will come in. So here's another thing to consider as you are migrating from your OpenShift 3 to your OpenShift 4 cluster. Uh, you should be, uh, or you might see a need to increase your OpenShift 4 capacity and decrease your OpenShift 4 capacity as you're progressing with this migration. So a typical way to achieve that would be to uh, target some applications on your OpenShift 3 cluster that you're looking at migrating to OpenShift 4 and then migrate those, those apps. Uh, evacuating like one of your nodes on your OpenShift 4, 3 cluster as soon as you're starting to run out of space on OpenShift 4 and so on and then keep going until uh, all your hardware or your servers have been also migrated from an OpenShift 3 to an OpenShift 4 cluster. So another thing to consider is to think about uh, potentially leveraging a fully HA cluster configuration using a load balancer to help you with this migration project. So by having multiple clusters, getting load balance from uh, a global load balancer, then you, this allows you to first uh, remove one of your cluster from uh, your application uh, load balancing configuration, and then upgrading that application from the OpenShift 3 to the OpenShift 4 cluster. Once this uh, has been completed, then you can reconfigure your load balancer to point your traffic again to your OpenShift 4 cluster and repeat the same approach for all your applications until uh, you have fully migrated out of your OpenShift 3 to your OpenShift 4 cluster. This gives you the best uh, case scenario to reduce the amount of downtime. Uh, obviously, you can also use DNS to do the same thing, but by using a, a two cluster approach, this means that the traffic still can hit your application while you are uh, migrating from an OpenShift 3 to an OpenShift 4 cluster. Here's a couple of roadmap items as well that we are working on right now for uh, the next releases of this tool. So the first one is the ability to do migration as a non-admin user. Uh, the second one is to have more granularity under your project or namespaces to be able to pick specific resources inside one project instead of having to migrate everything at once. 
And then finally, we're also looking at potentially adding pre and post migration and support playbooks to allow more complex use cases to be executable directly from this tool. Today, you could actually do that by using a playbook that would call the API of the tool, but by having this available inside the tool, that just makes it even easier to leverage Ansible as a way to automate the full process end to end uh, when you are migrating your applications. Thank you very much and have a good day.